Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are in another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. Well, good morning, all peoples, Bill, rookies. Here we rookets. are in the creative real estate world known as Bill's Planet. You should call it Pete's Planet too, right? Bill and Pete's Planet. Well, it's Bill's Planet. It depends on who he lets in. He let me in. Yeah, there you go. He let you folks in. He doesn't let everybody in, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't. A lot of people bang on the door. And no. Yeah. You have to like, you know, you have to know the password. I get a lot secret, of people banging word. on the door for sure. Episode yeah. number 244. It's called New and Improved Secrets for Creative Real Estate Rookies. Oh, New. And I'm not, I'm not exactly excited about this title because it really doesn't do the justice of this podcast, but that's what I decided. Oh, okay. So, you well, you know, title is just a title. Yeah. So, All right. So, well, title gets people to listen to you, but then you got to go for it now. Yeah. So, new and improved secrets for creative real estate rookie success. Here we go. As we all know, after 2020, things have changed. And in many cases, a lot. Plus, I have noticed too many students and coaches clients telling me it has gotten harder and harder to take down the creative real estate deals we talk about podcast after podcast what's happening yep okay oh yet boy i rub my hand and you hear it oh it's, and it's loud yet i go like this yet uh so i'm gonna read that again so uh you all set there yep. okay good so, plus, I have noticed too many students and coaching clients telling me it has gotten harder and harder to take down the creative real estate deals where we, we talk about podcast after podcast. Yet, me and my crew have actually been taking down more deals and monsters lately. So, I started introspecting. What are we doing different than my students and coaching clients? And in this podcast, I'm going to give you the results of what I found and show you how to do it too for bigger results than I ever got or I ever get is what it says. But this, but, you get that? But, and this, but. and this is a, Big bot. Don't have high expectations of some new amazing tool you can just push a button to make work and have houses fall off the conveyor belt. No, it's actually tweaks we have made with my simple three step system, just adapting to today's crazy world with a huge increase in results. More deals, in other words. Plus, this entire podcast is designed to revitalize any investor who has feelings like he's been beating his head against the wall with a bloody nose as the only result. Mm. <laughs> Let's dig in. Nice picture there, bloody nose. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> so you say a few tweaks, huh? Yes. So, uh, good morning, Farah. Uh, the best thing I could tell you is, is so I'm going to go over that in a minute, but the best thing I could tell you is, is uh, if you want to learn more about what we do, go to FlippingHousesForRookies.com. FlippingHousesForRookies.com. There's a bunch of free stuff there. This is episode number 244, and there's uh, 243 episodes you can listen to to learn how to flip houses. So before we get started, uh, just realize that in your description of wherever you found this podcast or wherever you watching it or listening to it, uh, there is a link there that will get you to our free stuff page. And there's over 25 documents, scripts, videos, uh, white sheets, uh, all kinds of stuff there. 
uh, as I've been promoting the last couple of weeks, the best document I think on there is called the lease option explained. It, I think it's a four or five page document. If you were to go hand, you print that and handwrite it 10 times, you would know what a lease option is. And you could literally like within 30 days, go find one and do it. Cause it's got all the frequently asked questions, uh, all that stuff. Yep, it's all there. Okay, let me let me take care of uh, Farah here for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the lease option explained is what we send to sellers when they ask more, like how does it work, what it's all about, and that explains everything so we don't have to over and over. Right. But if you're talking to somebody and you want to explain it, you need to read it a lot and write it and really know it well so you just have the answers and not be bumbling or stumbling. Right. So... Uh, just realize that every Thursday morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we record this podcast. Uh, we live stream it to uh, Facebook, as I call Flickbook, and we live stream, stream it to YouTube that I call ZooTube because it's a freaking zoo on there lately. Um, and uh, you could ask questions if you want about the podcast. Not about other things, about the podcast. If you want to ask questions about other things, then you can go to flipping, flippinghousesforrookies.com uh, and go to the top right-hand side and put in a support ticket. It says support ticket. Uh, put in a support ticket. All those support tickets come to me, and I will answer them uh, within any 24-hour period. Most of the time, I check that two or three times a day, except for days like today, Peter. I will not be checking it two or three times today. <laughs> I have a very no, well, important, very important engagement today. As soon as I get done with the podcast, I have a couple little odds and ends to do, and my grandson and I are going to the science museum. Yay! <laughs> He's three, and they have dinosaurs. I think it'll be a good afternoon. <laughs> all right, good. So all that said, here we go. First, Pete, I would like to, and I've never done this before that I remember. I might have, but I don't remember. I'd like to dedicate this podcast to Ryan M Munich. M-U-N-I-A-K. Munich. Okay. He's a student that had, fe that had fallen off the real estate wagon. To only, uh, to only return because I'm assuming he couldn't uh, get what he wanted somewhere else. Mm. So yeah, We've seen that one. Yeah, so his support ticket to me enticed me uh, to do this podcast because he asked how we could get revitalized again. He wanted to know how he could get revitalized again. Mm. And back to doing the real estate, doing the real estate deed. <laughs> like, that, yeah, the like, deed. like that play on words? <laughs> yeah, the deed. <laughs> All right, no fluff today. We have a lot to cover, so listen Listen carefully. You will have to listen to this one a couple times. Uh, what I do, Peter, is uh, behind the scenes is I'm actually writing some of these podcasts, even though they're free, for my coaching clients. And, uh, and uh, I put a lot of detail in there, more than I should. And I'm told very often, yeah. I'm, I'm, every single day, I am thanked for what I do or what we do to help the community. Uh, which I mm -hmm. understand. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it, in the beginning, I, I was embarrassed by it. But honestly, almost every single person that sends me any kind of communication starts off with, thank you for everything that you do. Because we just give so much information. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because I'm not afraid to give information. First of all, people have to implement it. Uh, second of all, I have enough of my own deals. And, I, and I'm very confident... Uh, uh, very confident that uh, I'm not going to be squashed by my students because they're competition. So yeah, you can go up to a house and one of your students already bought it like yesterday. Yeah, out from under your nose. Yeah. Ha ha. Yeah, and I call the student and ask him how he did it so I don't miss again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we've seen that happen. Yeah. So oh. Farah, uh, if this does work in Canada. I actually have students in Canada that follow me and uh, have raving results. Good morning, John. Thank you. Yes, you should watch today and then listen again on Monday when it hits the podcast platforms. <laughs> and he said, there you go. See what I mean? I don't know if he's being a smart ass, but he said, and thank you for all that you have done for us. <laughs> well, you know, this is important, you know, making a, a good living with, with real estate, making some big kills or just setting up a future. Anything beside your day-to-day -day job or your little job, whatever you're doing, your big job. 
people have a lot of a lot of hope for this and uh a lot of people try this it's not like no one's thought of doing this before there's a lot of people out there so you gotta know what you're doing right so it's important what we do so i'd like to set the pace off today peter uh, along the lines of what you're talking about uh this, this podcast and if you've noticed uh recently uh we've come away from all the deal structuring and all the technicalities of having to do deals because th that is that's like well i'm going to talk about it later that's like doing the calculus math before you learn addition, subtraction, and division. Okay, yeah, right. So honestly, I want to make sure that this message throughout this entire podcast is extremely, extremely, very, very loud and clear that this business is basic human skills. It's basic communication between you and another human and that is what will make you a shit ton of money. It's not the deal structuring. It's not the paperwork. It's not all the fancy moves like you're a magician on stage that's going to woo and wah. And they're going to be like, how did you do that? That is not mm. why sellers sell. Okay, so I want to preface it with that. So okay. with that said, here are some basics. Right? So... Mm -hmm. I hate to use this word, but I could not figure out how else, how else to word it. So what are we selling? What's our product? Mm -hmm. What are we giving the seller? Right? And creative real estate deals. What are we giving the seller in a creative real estate transaction? Hell, for, for that matter, any real estate transaction. What are we giving them? And here's my... Let me stab at it. Go ahead. Are you asking me? Well, I, I think the best answer should be something along the lines of relief from something they're dealing with, whether it's a problem or a goal, just relief or a solution to what they're trying to do. That's what I'm trying to change. Mm-hmm. Because it's simpler than that, Peter. Hmm. So here's my answer. Yeah. So the question is, what are we giving the seller? Well, you better not say money. Is that, you better not say money. That'd be too easy. You better have something better than that. <laughs> Human kindness and service. Think about it. Have you ever given money to a piece of steel, a two by four, a front door, the building, a plot of land? Like I always say in the pad pod, in, in the in the past podcast. When we show up at the closing, the building, the lot, the, the house does not arrive to sign the documents. A person does. A mm -hmm. sentient person, one that has feelings. Yep. That's alive and can think. Mm -hmm. Right? Obvious yeah. sellers are paying us for their happiness. They seek, which is why we need to know what the seller's barriers are to getting that happiness first. Hmm. Now, a lot of people associate money with happiness. And I got a newsflash. People that associate money with happiness are people that don't have money and are dreaming about <laughs> it. Because when mm -hmm. you have money, it's a pain in the ass. You're constantly moving it, and, and, and it's like having children. You have to constantly babysit it. And, and if people think you have money and your money's not hidden, then they're constantly attacking you, you know, insidiously or, or, or honestly. You know, they, they feel like they're desperate and you have plenty of it, so why not give them some, which is fine. But your evaluation and their evaluation is probably off. Yep. And here's the thing, you know, I'm reading a book right now and I can't remember the name of it, but it, Sean gave it to me. It's a fascinating book, fascinating book. It's about some guy that bought a thousand houses, owner finance houses, right? So uh, it's an amazing book. I mean, I'm just reading the beginning of it and it's just, he's a, he's a, it's, he's just telling a story of his life. It's a, hmm. it's a biography of his life. 
and it's. I'm amazing. still stuck back at. I'm stuck back at a thousand creative. Yeah, well, he started. He, start, he started in the in the in the eighties, so yeah. that's why. Anyways, so I lost my my train of thought. The point is, is that uh, people that don't have money don't understand. It's a job. Yeah. Now it's a good job if you know how to do it, but it's not taught. Just like real estate's not taught, having money is not mm. taught. Right. right. Okay, so I'm going to read this again. Obviously, the sellers are paying for happiness that they want to seek, right? Yep. So here's my profound statement. Money flows to happiness then. Hmm. In real estate, money flows to happiness. This is why I've been crushing, pounding on, slapping, beating, shooting, everything I can think of. This one point, you got to go out and be a reluctant buyer in the beginning. Don't try to buy a house, just study sellers. You do this for 30 days, you do this three, four, five times, and you will become an excelled real estate investor and have training that no other real estate investor in today's day and age will have. You want to know why? We have this little M word in our, in our society called the millennial. I've got them all around me, and I have the mm -hmm. utmost respect for them. They have taught me so much. But what they lack is people skills. Yeah. What they lack is confront with people. Getting them yep. to sit in front of somebody or talk on the phone with somebody is like the hardest thing in the world for most of them, not all of them. Mm -hmm. Or in a particular case, like I'm going through with one of my guys now, is he, he's good at confront but he's sloppy as hell at jamming it together. He like makes it up as he goes because he thinks he already knows. Oh. He doesn't, mm -hmm. he doesn't get the experience of the ride. You know, he hasn't been around the block to make sure that he knows that Uncle Joe's over there with a shotgun and going to pop you if you go too close to the curb. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So... This is why I've been crushing students to go out and become and be reluctant buyers and study the sellers. This happiness approach is the undercurrent of the entire business. Before confidence, before mathematics, profit, overall success with any real estate transaction, you have to get to this core of the transaction. What mm. is happy and what is unhappy? The decision to sell the property was to use the equity or proper or profit for happiness, something they want. Or they decided to sell because they were probably it was probably making them unhappy and they're done with that program. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, we've seen that. Which drops us in the lap of your success depends upon the value the seller places upon what you can do for them to make them happy. Now, this is mm -hmm. profound, and I know this is profound, and I know I shouldn't be doing this on a podcast. This is definitely, you know, like workshop material with a little bit of training under your belt, but I can't, I can't refuse myself because if you honestly get this podcast, and we've had some good ones. There's about eight or ten podcasts that if you listen to them, you can excel in this business. You could quantum leap in this business. So 244 and 243 are a couple of them. I know 205 and 206 are another couple of them. Uh, you know, and, and anything above 200, if you're listening to those podcasts, they're, they, I mean, we've really, I've gotten a lot of compliments. I'm not saying that we've done a really good job. I'm telling what other people have told us. I get support mm -hmm. tickets on them like, like, like they're so excited about that, right? Okay. So... Your success, that's something worth writing down, your success depends upon the value the seller places upon what you can do for them to make happiness. Hmm. So the value can be heading to happiness or away from the barriers or uncomfortableness of pain. Yeah. 
So they're either moving away from pain or moving towards happiness. It's kind of the same thing, but it's... it's well, n no, I see a, a kind of a, a big difference in the way of like... We, we've talked to people, oh, I want to move to Florida. I want to buy a condo and I use the money there because I love it in Florida. I want to go there. Okay, great. He's looking for something pleasant. Then there was the lady we were talking to. There was a house in New Britain we were trying to buy. And the, the lady needed $30,000 like yesterday for her husband's cancer surgery. Right. It wasn't just for fun. This guy needed it. Insurance wasn't covered. So they had a real bad problem that they really needed some help with. Right. So I'm not sure we could, we can't always help with that if they need money right away. But if they don't need it right away, it could be a problem that we can totally help them with. Right. We've seen that one too. Perfect. Yeah. So it's the seller's idea of value you bring them. It's not mm -hmm. your idea. It's the seller's idea of value you bring them or how much the seller is willing to pay for the end results of happiness, right? Yeah, something we can do for them, right? Yep. So it's the seller's idea of value you bring them or, or how much the seller is willing to pay for at the end of the day to get results of happiness or what he thinks is happiness and how much he or she thinks it's worth to get. Mm -hmm. Which means your success depends upon the value a seller places upon your services to help them. Yep. And you must understand happiness is relative. Each seller has a different concept of it. And the biggest mistake real estate entrepreneurs make in using their own values to detect what other people want. Mm -hmm. So I've seen that so many times. It's like, well, they won't do that. Well, did you ask them? No, but I, you know, the, the investor themselves wouldn't do that. A classic case of that is is subject to. Or mortgage transfers. Right. It's actually Pamela, my wife, calls them mortgage transfers because she can't understand subject to. No, th those are mortgage transfers, she calls them. <laughs> well, she did some mortgage work for a while, right? Yeah. Right. So that, that makes sense to her. Yeah, so you're transferring the mortgage from the seller's name to your name, actually into a trust. But, uh, but anyways, yeah. most people will be like, what do you mean the seller leaves the loan in their name and the deed goes in your name? I would never do that. Well, you don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, out of all the seven strategies that I teach, seven plus, the seven core strategies, which you can find at FlippingHousesForRookies.com, just go to the left of the blonde with the one holding the money and there's a course in there and you could get uh, several hours worth of training for free. We used to sell it, but you get it for free now. Okay. So until you understand those core strategies, you really don't know whether you can make that decision. You know, I got to tell you, my oldest daughter, I mean, both my kids do, but my oldest daughter um, thinks the world of me. And I didn't realize this until really lately when somebody was explaining it to me. I, I just I just treat her like she's my daughter. Right. And you want to mm -hmm. know you want to know why I think she thinks that. Sure. Why? Because because when I when she calls me with whatever she's telling me, like a problem or something going on in her life, I'll listen. And I'll say to her, Jesse, do you think you have enough data to make that decision? Well, no. I got to find this out, and I got to find that, and I got to find this out. I'll, okay. Well, why don't we figure out that out, and then we can make a decision. And I make her work through it. I never really give her my opinion on the situation unless it's unless I've if she's compiled all the information. Then I'll be like, I don't know what you want to do, but here's what I would do. Yeah. Right. But I think that's the biggest reason why she's so like bonded with me because we do a lot of stuff together. You know, it's, it could be the kids, it could be her mom, it could be her her mom's family who is sometimes a bit a bit of a handful, you know, uh, my, my ex-in-laws and all that stuff, you know, they got a whole drama thing going on, you know, or it could be my sister. She's got the same thing going on and a lot of drama, you know, and she's like trying to sort through stuff. And it's like, you don't have all the data. 
So mm. in, until you have all the information, I mean, you can't say 2 plus 2 equals 4 without 2 plus 2. You can't say 2 plus, ah, uh, how does that equal 4? I mean, you could reverse yep. it, but you're guessing, mm -hmm. right? So that's what yeah, happens. Then we'll do an algebra. We'll do an algebra with life. Then, yeah, try to mix in, try to uh, figure out mix what is x equal and what is y, and right. why not just find out? So my point is in today's podcast is is if you don't know what they what the happiness card is, what's making them happier, what are they, what are they, and I'm going to go over this in a little bit more detail. So I don't want to tip the cart, but you know if you don't know that or you don't know what their outcome looks like in their head, then then all the fancy sentences and scripts, and they're not going to trick people, mm. especially in a world that's full of scam. You know what that reminds me of? When we go to dinner, and we're sitting there looking at the menu, we kind of know, you know, we all, mostly, we all usually know what we want to eat when we go someplace. I want this or that. And you're looking at the menu, you're trying to find it. Then they come over and they tell you all these freaking specials that are weird with oddball stuff, right? It's like, what? What do you, what do you, and you want to go like, stop. I don't want to hear all that. You're totally missing me. Yeah. Or, or worse, somebody comes, knocks on the door and go, hi, we're in the neighborhood. You know, we've been putting up siding for a long time. And we just want to know, you know, we can do your siding too. Why don't you ask me if I need some first? Right. Or if I need something. Why don't you just ask me? And they never do. They just throw stuff. So at you're me. gonna love like, the rest of this. Close podcast. the door. You're gonna love the huh? rest. You're gonna love the rest of this podcast. All right. So the biggest mistake that that real estate and entrepreneurs make is that they they use their own values to determine what other people want. Just like what you were just saying. The the yeah. siding salesman is using his values, saying your house needs siding, so he's he's evaluated for you. And never ask you, well, what do you think? Right? Yeah. Don't even ask. It's what they want that counts. Or the person paying you is the only vote that counts. Mm -hmm. Right? Which means we only have one thing that is our secret to success. Without luck a lot of training, and special forces. Mm. And here it is. Find out what people want and then help them get it. Find out what people want. In this case, find out what sellers want mm -hmm. and then help them get it. But it is it as easy as asking them, or do you have to do a lot of digging? We're going to cover all this. I'm going right? to cover all this. You're, you're right? trying to get ahead of me here. So I'm sorry it's no, taken me question. so much yeah. time, but I want to make sure we <laughs> set the stage so you get the importance of this. Because honestly, it'll yeah. take us 90 minutes or whatever it'll take us to explain all this. This happens in split seconds when you're with a seller. This is not some major like oh, yeah. process or script or anything. I mean, there is some things you can do, but... Often it can happen with a few sentences. Oh, no, totally. Right? So, well, like you're saying, like you, you've been tweaking that stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. So okay. all this happens in my three-step system, which is the opening contact or call. We call contact because sometimes we text, right? Uh, so that's the opening contact, so you reach the seller, uh, the closing call, and then a deal meeting. And in episode number 242... We, we talk about each of these having two main objectives, right? Mm -hmm. To hit before you move on to the next one. So what That I was really helpful. Yeah, so what I found was out really was helpful. is that the guys that are listening to these podcasts or in my coaching calls, when I, when I dig into what actually happened, because the biggest thing I get a complaint about is they're ghosting me. Yeah. They disappeared. They were real. They seemed really interested, but then they disappeared. Mm -hmm. No, what you were doing is just like this: the siding salesman at your front door. You were imposing your values onto the seller, and they weren't interested. Or you took away the mystery of what you could do for them until you could get enough data to be able to give it to them in one fell swoop, so they understand. Mm -hmm. Because 
Unfortunately, Peter, creative real estate is not a sale like you go on Amazon and you just buy something and it shows up at your front doorstep. No. Yep. Yep. Creative real estate is not going on the MLS and saying, you're asking 175, I'll give you 125 and you start haggling. That's mm -hmm. not what creative real estate is. We're buying pretty houses, right? Where most of the time the seller is financing us or leasing to us or doing something like that most of the time or our private lenders are and and it's mm -hmm. a people's game so we it's an education process because most people don't understand it because it's old-fashioned and the realtors have hit it from most people mm. okay john says <laughs> thanks john john says most of most of all the 200 series have been for advanced rookies. Love it. <laughs> That's what you are, Peter, an advanced rookie. <laughs> he doesn't like those stripes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right. I might be a little past that. We'll see what happens uh, down the road. <laughs> so episode 242 is where we cover a lot of that stuff. I'm not going to cover that again because uh, it'll take too much time. I have much better stuff to go over with you. So make sure you go listen to 242. Even if you have listened to it, go listen to it after you've listened to this podcast. You should jargon not between 242 and 244. Okay. Right. And I took copious notes on 242 because mm -hmm. I'm here every podcast, but there's some gems in there yeah. because the, it's in the details and keeping the sequence in, 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 you know, in order, You're not jumping ahead. You jump ahead, you lose it. Yeah. So it's so not you, hard. You that it's really not good. hard. It's just recognizing you hit the milestones. And then yeah, it's time to move on. I didn't on. even know there was one. Yeah. Well, you broke it down though. That's I, what I'm saying. You know, I thought there was like one, two, three and it's, one and a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. You know, right. it's like there's little pieces in there. Right. That helped a lot. Yeah. So by me labeling them, you can now notice that. And because they were not labeled, you didn't know you were skipping them. And that causes people to coast, ghost you and, and not accept your mm -hmm. offers and all that kind of stuff. So that, that, that yeah. one podcast was amazing. So the main mm -hmm. point here is, is that the closing call, right? So we had the opening call, the closing call, the deal meeting, right? The closing yeah. call, there's there's a two-step process there, which is the discovery stage and then the offer section. Mm -hmm. So today I'm pounding on the discovery stage. Okay. And yeah. just like a student has to do, like I said before, addition and subtraction, multiplication, and division before learning calculus, your offers are the same way. You need to get the seller up to the calculus before they understand the benefit of the offer. So it's an educational process. And if you skip mm. one of the lower grades, it's too steep of a gradient, as I talk about, right? And the seller, mm. when they don't understand, automatically say no. So if you don't go mm. through the three steps, like I, I fully explained in op episode 242, I want to make sure that's right. I keep saying 242. I have attention on that. Maybe it's the wrong number because I didn't look it up. Let me look. Yes. Yeah, I wrote it's the a, notes. It's, a, I can't, it's 242. It's two weeks yeah. ago. Okay. okay. Yeah, so if you, if you don't understand how to do that in episode 242, then what you're doing is, is you're shoving calculus down a first grader's throat. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why they're having human emotion and reaction or why they're crying or why they're, you know, why they're this or why they're that or why you're having such a difficult time with them. It's because you're forcing it down their throat and it's too steep of a gradient. So the first thing that you have to realize is, is that, that, that you need to figure that out. That's why there's a discovery stage. Mm -hmm. Then once I started breaking it down and I started in my coaching groups, you know, cause I've got one in Israel and one in the United States and I have guys from, you know, Australia and Canada and all that kind of stuff. And plus I have guys all over the United States that I coach every you know week or every other week. And when I started breaking it down, I realized yet again that there was a vacuum on what I call discovery and what they think is discovery. Yeah. Which is what this podcast is all about, is the discovery stage. And then when I started two-dimensionally, in other words, writing it out and trying to work on questions and, 
and how to organize what I do, because that's really hard to do. You know, put a third eye on yourself and say, well, how come I could do it and they aren't? We're doing the same thing. Well, we're not, because I have a few more details that I have not articulated, and that's what I'm attempting to do here. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, hmm. All right, good. So next we have, so first thing we got to do is find out what it is that they want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to call that the reason. So what's the reason mm -hmm. for selling or for, you know, for being happy? What's the reason they're not happy? There's a way to say it. What's the reason that they're not happy or want to be happy? So you have to find mm -hmm. that out first. Then once you figure that out, you have to figure out the motivation. See, a lot of my students or coaching clients try to motivate the sellers. Mm. Yeah, and you're right. That's, and that's their mistake is they're trying to motivate the seller. Yeah, like trying to convince them how good this would be bad mistake. And I just noticed this after 20 years. <laughs> it's because I'm really like honed in on this because this is important. Mm. And the pandemic created this because, you know, what's happening is, is it's easier for me to do these days to see this. And here's the reason why you ready? Yeah. Because we're not in the house when we were in the house before I could get recordings maybe, but I couldn't see what was happening. Nowadays, because we're texting and because we're recording with, you know, our CRMs, our customer relation management tools, like we use REI Reply, it automatically mm -hmm. records everything so I can go, I can get a recording from them so I can see the text. I can see the whole timeline of events. Oh, man. How embarrassing. And, and here's the thing is because of the technology, I can now say, wait a minute, he missed that step there. And it's easier for oh. me to keep track of because of today's technology. So it's like popping yeah. out like mad in front of my eyes. It's like the boogeyman jumping out of underneath the bed. And I'm like, there you are. I can finally see you. Hmm. So it's like, it's like this weird phenomenon, right? So you're not capable of motivating anyone. <laughs> you really aren't. Hmm. No, no. Well, you always, you always say find the motivated seller. So you're trying to find the motivation, right. not make the motivated. We've said that in various ways, but it's, so you're talking, there's a reason to talk. I want to hear more about this. There's a reason I'm they're not, doing it and motivation. Keep, yeah. keep explaining that. I, want to hear, I don't so, get the difference. So here, yet. here's going. my, here's my point. Have you ever tried to motivate a teenager? <laughs> oh God, well, get the hell out of bed and go look for a job. It's, it's goddamn noon. It's noon. You it's get noon. It? Get out of bed. You get oh, it? Did I say that out loud? <laughs> that was your outside voice, Pete. Right? So, most of the really good investors realize that every seller is already motivated. Otherwise, the property wouldn't be for sale, right? Yeah. So just 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 for curiosity, let me give me a second here because you're you're asking a pinpoint question. So uh, let me go online here. All right. So, to answer your question, Pete, just just mm -hmm. type in "motivated" into into dictionary Google, right? Mm -hmm. And the second definition says "stimulate someone's interest or enthusiasm for doing something." So, okay, we're not going to stimulate it. They already have an interest or enthusias enthusiasm for doing something. So you have the reason, like I want to. Uh, so he here's here's what it's like. So they have a desire mm -hmm. for happiness. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. just a wish. Like I like if it fell in my lap, I'd like it. Right. Motivation moves up into the interest where they're actually doing something about it. Mm -hmm. So the motivation's what puts them in action. 
So the reason's oh. one thing, the motivation's another thing, like what, what's, what's pushing them to do something? What's, what's creating the action for the idea? So what are they would it be doing along, about it? Right. So would it be something along the line of person has an idea, like it gets a thought in their head, like, sure, yeah, that'd be nice. But then you have to find something that, that you know, fires it up, like some emotion, some feeling like, oh boy, so that they get into action. So let me make something it like even that. simpler. So they yeah. have the reason and then they have a passion to do it. Yeah. The passion's what's driving them to get it. Right. That's their motivation. Okay. Okay. So what I'm saying is most really good investors know or realize every seller's already motivated. motivated. Otherwise, the property wouldn't be for sale. They've actually sure. got up off the couch and listed the house or they put it on a for sale by owner site or something like that. Right? Yeah. So your job as a real estate entrepreneur is to find out what the motivation is and then demonstrate that your offer will satisfy their needs and wants. What do you think is easier, Peter? One, help the seller get what they want. Or two, try to change or overcome their motivation. <laughs> no, do not change your motivation. Any husband should know that one. <laughs> oh boy, we're in hus hus husband school now. <laughs> hey, that might make sense to the husbands and for the wives and the boys and girls. That might, that might you know, just little, 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 little a picture there to look at. Good. So, yeah. if he wants something, you can't offer. Like one, because we use one of the seven strategies that that I've I've taught. Which, if you go to Flipping Houses for Rookies, you can get it there for free. Okay, so one of the seven offers is what we use, right? So if yep. he wants something you can't offer, like he wants all cash in thirty days, mm -hmm. you can't do that because it's either we get monthly we we get a property using monthly payments until we pay them off, or a discount. Okay. Right. Most people don't realize the first 12 or 15% of their profit goes to the realtor system. You know, the 5 or 6% for the realtor, the 3% for negotiating, the 3% for repairs, even if it's a beautiful house for negotiating, uh, for spooking the buyer after the inspector's been there. And then you got 3% for actual closing costs, which is attorney, conveyance tax, all that kind of stuff. That's 15%. So most people don't mm -hmm. realize the first 15% of their profit goes to all the services to get the house closed. They don't know that. They're not told that. Up front, they're told that later in the system. Okay? So, if they want all cash in 30 days, you can't give that to them. You shouldn't give that to them. Right? Mm -hmm. So, the sooner you know that, the sooner you know he or she is a suspect for your plan. He's not a suspect. He's a suspect to you. He's not a suspect as a house seller. He's a suspect for your plan. And the faster you find this one, this suspect, and get rid of him, the faster you can find someone who is willing to do your plan. Right. Right? So the rule is this, Pete. We're moving, we're moving along nicely here. I think we're doing good on time, too. So the rule is this. Find the seller's motivation and then appeal to it. Mm. Okay, so let me just summarize this. Let me go back through my notes. Mm -hmm. So, the first thing I said, if you're summarizing, the first thing I said is find out what people want and then help them get it. Mm hmm now what I'm saying is the second thing you do is find out the seller's motivation and appeal to it. Mm -hmm. See how it's getting easier? So this is mm -hmm. the discovery stage before you make the offer. So the first thing you want to do is find out what people want and then help them get it. And then, and I'm giving you all the theory behind it so you can do that. And I could, I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes how you could do this with sentences. Okay. Okay. I'm just, you know, that when you say that, I'm thinking, gee, well, how would I do that? What would I say? So yeah. it's coming. Yeah. So, 
So then what you need to do is you need to find out the seller's motivation and then appeal to it. Yeah. Am I clear? Yeah. Okay, good. You're not convincing them. You're finding out what it is and showing that you could do that. And they should be happy because you're helping them get whatever goal they're trying to do. They right. should be happy, you know, encouraged. At least they're hearing the right thing that they're hoping to hear. Right. So first things first. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do this again. Find out what their expectation is once the closing happens. Example question. If I had a magic wand and waved it over your deal, what would you want? You've heard me say that in houses. Yep, you have. And they answer. Step two. Discover why the seller is motivated to get what he told you in step one. Mm -hmm. This is the heart, right smack dab, the heart of the discovery stage. So let's go over some questions mm -hmm. our listeners can use so they get the correct results. Okay. Yep. Now these are just, these are not like proven, tested. These are just stuff I pulled out of my head that I've used in the past. I don't really have statistics on like some of my other sentences. This is just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Yeah, but that's your point today. And for many podcasts, it, it's not the magic word. It's knowing what you're looking for. Right. And just talk about it to the guy and have something to say, have a few questions, but know what you're looking for. Especially if you're in a house being a reluctant buyer, just trying to figure things out. The most valuable education you could get is to go in a house without the expectation of buying it and do some of the stuff that we're talking about and you will get a forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar education within thirty days if you do what I tell you to do. The students that actually do this call me up, and they are blown away, blown away, at how much they learn. Yeah, you know what I think that does. It just dawned on me. The problem we have as wannabes, rookies, and whatever, sir, is that we're doing it for ourselves. We're not doing it for the other person. We don't even know the other person until we meet them. We know him for like five minutes. What do we care? It's a total stranger. We like us better than them. But you can't get anything done unless you drop interest in you and put it in the other person and find out. So if you're not thinking you're going to buy the house, you stop worrying about if you're going to get it or not. You stop worrying about yourself and just pay attention to the other person. Exactly. Maybe you'll learn something. So I decided a few days, Peter, ago, to, to distract this conversation. I decided a few days ago that if I were to have a headstone, but. which I don't plan on it because I want to be cremated, but if I were to have a headstone, here's what I want, here's what I want to be known by. This is what mm -hmm. describes Bill Hawthorne to the core. This is my motto. Ready? Yep. I learn by living. Now that's a new one from you, right? I don't think I've heard you say, yeah, you've told me a couple of those, like, yeah, I want this, I'm going to, uh, I learned from living. By living. By living. If you don't go out and live, and you know what? Uh, I've mm. had some very influential authors in religion yeah. and out of religion. I've heard it multiple times say the best way to be a writer either a fiction writer or any type of a writer, a copywriter, is to live it first. Sure. Go through the experiences of your recipient, mm -hmm. whoever you're writing to, who's going to read your stuff. Go through what they've gone through. Yeah. So this is why I come up with this. This is not some miraculous new idea I came up with. I've just heard it over and over again, and I'm just applying it in real estate. It's what I did. I learned by living. I learned by living yep. the role of an investor. You ever hear this thing, which I never believed in, but it kind of fits into it. Fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to fake it. And in a few minutes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some mm -hmm. really cool shit. And one of the things is, is just be honest. You tell your seller this is your first deal. Will you help me and get that agreement? 
it'll be it'll be so much less stress for you because you won't have to fake it. Yeah. Learn by living. Get out there and live the part. Nobody says you have to be a professional. Nobody who who's putting that pressure on you? You are. Why? Because you're embarrassed that you might make a mistake. Well, get your ego out of the way and you won't have to spend so much money and be so aggravated. Just tell somebody, mm -hmm. this is my first deal. And, and my coaching clients have the awesome, awesome ability to say, my partner's done hundreds of deals. He's going to help us. That's worth the coaching, the coaching fee right there. Is to go out and mm -hmm. learn by living and saying, oh, I got a safety net. My coaching, my coaching mentor or my partner or whatever you want to call me has done hundreds of deals. Let me call him and find out what he would do and I'll get back to you. All the stress is gone now. What are you worried about? Yeah. Learn by living. Mm -hmm. So I have a question for you. Do you know how yes. to swim? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you think I could teach you how to swim without ever getting in the water? Um, eh, maybe. I'd rather have you in the water, though. No, 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 no. You misunderstood my question. Oh, you've never been in the water? No, no. Could you what? learn how to swim without ever getting in the water? Oh, I, no. No. It's all theory. It's all uh, book, book words. Nope. How many people in this industry are trying to learn how to swim without ever getting in the water? Because they think they need to know everything so they don't drown. No. Instinct will take over, baby. Instinct will take over. Mm -hmm. And what I'm asking you to do is go in a house and do the things that I'm telling you to do, which are very simple. I'm, I'm blowing them up and making them, you know, 90 minute podcasts for week after week. So you understand because I can't seem to be getting duplicated on how simple it is. You guys want it complicated, not me. <laughs> you go in a restaurant well, and you sit down and the waitress or waiter, the waitress will say the waitress comes over. Do you talk to that waitress? So why do you tell me you're afraid to talk to strangers? When you go to the bank teller and there's a brand new teller there and you have to deposit your paycheck, what's more important to you, depositing your paycheck or overcoming the fear that you might have to talk to a stranger? <laughs> right? Yep. When you have to go to the bathroom and you're in the grocery store and you don't know where the bathroom is and you, you go to somebody that you don't even know and say, where's the men's room? What's more important to you to relieve yourself or overcome the fear of talking? So why is it so hard to go talk to a stranger? I don't get it. You do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I could say the stakes are higher, but you also have the strategy of going to house as a reluctant buyer with no stakes just for the practice and take the stakes out of it so you don't put the nervousness there. Just practice. You, if you take, if you take most people that spend a lot of money on educating themselves on how to be a real estate investor are doing it for only one reason. They're trying to buy the house in the one hour first visit when they sit down with the person. Hmm. They're trying to do it quickly instead of going through the discovery stage and finding out what's needed and wanted. Here are the questions. Yeah. Here are some of the questions. Okay. So the reason. This is a reason question because I'm going to do reason and motivation. So this is this is the best question that I don't think I've ever talked about, but I use to some variations or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Mr. Seller. Obviously, if it's a, got a skirt on, you say Mrs. Seller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to make notes. Yeah, I'm going to wait for you to stop making all the noise. <laughs> Jeez, it's paper. These microphones, man. <laughs> okay. Mr. Seller, Go ahead. what's the biggest problem facing you getting this house sold? And then once he gives mm -hmm. it to you, you say, anything else? Yeah. So, Pete, what's the biggest problem yep. with... Uh, what's the biggest problem facing you with getting this house sold? Well, I have to get it sold in like three or four weeks because I have to move. There you go. I got a deadline. So that brings me to the motivation question. You would say, perfect. If you remove that, what would that allow you to do in life? Hmm. 
That's the motivation. So perfect, if you remove that, what would that allow you to do in life? So here's another one. Mm -hmm. The reason question. Explain to me how things would be better if you sold this house. Explain to me how things would be better if you sold this house. Then the motivation question would be, what have you done so far to try to make it better? So you'll mm. find out how motivated they are. So if they're like, oh, I just I just went on, on, on uh, Facebook and put it on Facebook and that's all they did, then they're obviously not very motivated, are they? Mm -hmm. The reason is not pushing on them enough. They, they're probably borderline suspect. Here's another one. How can I be of the greatest help to you with selling this house? How can I be of the greatest help to you with selling this house? Now watch this. You ready for the motivation question? Uh-huh. Who else have you tried to get to help you? Mm. I'm going to tell you right now. That is a 45 minute conversation with most people, <laughs> at least 30 minutes anyways. And let me, yeah. let me also tell you, if you haven't done this, you're going to be very surprised that all the confidential stories you're going to get about the bad experience with the realtor and the, and the closing agent. You're going to find out how injustice that system is, why I badger it so much. And I call it the real estate mafia episode 90. The real estate mafia. Yeah. We should do that again. Episode 90. That was 200 episodes ago. 150 episodes ago, I guess. Yeah, if you're going to scare me, though, I'm in the middle of selling my own family home yeah. right now. So I hope it goes well. <laughs> here's, an, here's another one. Yeah. What do you think about the most... Uh, what do you think about the most when it comes to selling this property? Wow. What do you think about the most when it comes to selling this property? Yep. Then the motivating question is, which is, a, when I say motivating, it follows up the question once you ask it. It's the second question you ask. Mm -hmm. Are you tired of thinking about that? <laughs> Jeez, that's brutal. Why? Well, you know, the truth is you have to make somebody sometimes really feel what's happening. You know, if you go to the dentist, you can't just make believe it doesn't hurt. Like, where does it hurt? They have to touch it sometimes. Ow! Okay, pull it. The hell with it. Just pull it. Right. You have to really get to the source of the real problem. And it can be painful somewhat. But that's how the only way you're going to identify it and get rid of it. You can't, you know, skirt around it. That ain't working. We ask people to find their ruin or their distress, right? What's devastating them? Because that's what's yeah. going to get the deal done. If you don't have that devastating thing, you're not going to close as many deals. Mm -hmm. These are those questions. You have to yeah. pierce their social veneer. Well, these are the kind of questions, the way I'm looking at it, that will put a person in a position where creative financing would be uh, an option for them. They'd be willing to do it. If it's a guy that just couldn't care less, I just want lots of money. What are you going to do for him? That's right. I don't care. I don't need the money. You know, wait. Yep. Well, never mind. But these guys, they need to. They well, need even with the even if they need the money, there's a reason why he needs the money. So ask him, what do you need the money for? Because there's his motivation. Yeah. yeah, I'm saying the guy who doesn't, for example, yeah. like, hey, I don't need the money. Just I just want it. Okay. So and then we don't bother with those kind. Yep. So these kind, we can be helpful. Last one. How much do you think not getting this house sold is costing you? monetarily or emotionally mm -hmm. how much do you think not getting this house sold is costing you monetarily or emotionally and then the drum roll please but mm -hmm. i got a drum machine here hang on i'll turn it on no <laughs> what are you willing to do to stop that Mm. 
Okay, does that make sense now? Yeah. Good. Yep. So why I got your pen and paper there, Peter, let's put together a little checklist you can use in the closing step of my little system. Okay. So this is mostly for the discovery stage. So number one, so why don't you listen first and then you can write it down because I'll repeat mm -hmm. it. So number mm -hmm. one, recognize that every seller is motivated with hopes, aspirations, dreams, plans, goals, and ideas of what should happen. Don't try to motivate the seller, just discover the seller's present motivation for selling. So that's the mm -hmm. step. Just don't, don't try to motivate them. Just mm -hmm. discover the seller's present motivation for selling. Yep. Number two. Since every seller is different, there's no way of knowing the seller's true motivation. Mm -hmm. Your job is to discover what this motivation is then offer one of my seven deal strategies that will appeal to that motivation and whack the suspects that you can't appeal to. So what is a suspect? Okay. A suspect is somebody that you can't appeal to. Your suggestions mm -hmm. are not appealing to them. That's a suspect. So what you're going to do is you are going to, your job is to discover what's the motivation and then match one of the seven deal strategies to that motivation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is, which is what we're going to talk about next. So number three, okay. never, 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 never present your offer until you have done one and two above on the checklist. Mm. You, is that what you found people were doing wrong? They were jumping ahead and skipping yep. these kind of parts? Is that it? Yep. You know, can I say we've been to seminars years ago now where they would just go for it on the phone, right? And give them the offer, the number. And everybody's, everybody's excited in the room. Like, oh, my God, they're buying a house. You might be in, a, you know, in a New Jersey. You might be in Texas. And then you go home to meet with the people because these are your local people. And you go see them. They go, I don't want to do that. So you think you got something, you don't got something. So I would like to make a very strong comment right now mm -hmm. that took that has taken me six months to figure out. Mm. Okay. What you're saying is very true. That does work. Mm -hmm. But guess where? In a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. When we're in a seller's market like we are right now because mm -hmm. of the pandemic... It doesn't work. No, sure. It, yes, you're right. It'd be easier. So the I don't low know what market we were in at the time, but it was it, they were jumping the gun, and sometimes right. maybe get away with it. But I saw a lot of times they wouldn't even. They just they're jumping the gun. That's that's your point. They're jumping the gun. Right. So so to answer your question, just like your realization a few weeks ago, is you got to get more than two or three yeses. You got them to say what five yeses you said or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Sure. Just to be sure, yes or no. Don't give up until you have five no's. Don't assume it until you have five yeses. Right, right. So never, never, never present your offer until you have done one and two on this checklist. Yeah. So you don't want to try to outguess the seller's reason and motivation to sell. Okay. It isn't necessary. Wait until you found out what he'd be willing to do before making any offer. That is the law of offers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It isn't necessary. Wait until you found out what he'd be willing to do before you make an offer. Yeah. Okay. Now, here are some things that uh, help you increase your chances of getting of rookies getting more deals. So that's like the checklist. There's just three things, right? Mm -hmm. But you can plug these things in. There are seven of them. 
Okay. Okay. So yeah. here we go. Like I said, discover these are these are not something that you have to do like in order. The other three you have to do in order. These are just like you plug them in between and you use these how you feel fit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, discover the prospect's prime and core motivation by asking leading questions that encourage the seller to talk about the parts of the sale that will reveal motivation you can appeal to him with, right? So I talk about mm -hmm. rapport building, talk about the house, right? Or talk about their situation, not their kids and soccer and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm talking yeah. about here. So discover, pro discover the prospect's prime and core motivation. In other words, the most basic, basic reason why they're selling, which I say is happiness or lack of. Mm -hmm. So find out why, what happiness they're trying to get with this property or what, what pain they're trying to get away from to get to happiness. Um, do you have any comments today on how, we, how we're sure we have the right reason? Because you ask people questions, they go, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And that may not be the real thing. It might be two, three steps deeper and deeper. I've heard seven steps deep to find the real do you have any uh, suggestion on no, that to make sure we got the I, I right think, thing? I think if you just make sure that, uh, well, let me finish reading this and then, and then, because I think I might cover yeah. that down the road here. Yeah, because yeah, I remember you doing something that it, that might be the answer to my, I just thought of, but go ahead. Because, you know, us rookies, like, we'll ask a question, they'll answer, and we go, oh, I know what it is. And maybe it's not. It's just, they just you throw need, something You need off. to repeat it, but I'm going to go over that in a minute. All right, so. Okay, good. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we, we need to find their prime and core motivation by asking leading questions, which I just gave you some. Yeah. You'll be surprised that those questions results or conversations that will happen because of that. Then, Peter, I cannot teach this. Mm. I cannot teach this. But I'm telling you, it is one of the most vital things that you can do. Yeah. Take what they told you sincere and be interested in helping that seller with it. He is telling you how to acquire the house. If you do this as a reluctant seller, knowing if you do this enough, you'll get those monster deals all over your area. So don't go in every, in every house and know that or think that you have to close that deal because you're desperate. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you do this enough, if you go in and help people, how many times have you seen me do that? help people with loans and taxes and you know zoning i mean we spent one time in, in the town hall we spent a half a day in the zoning going to mm -hmm. find out some guy had two lots that he thought he could sell that he couldn't sell and we didn't buy the property yeah did i he, he's owned the property how many years and he didn't know right and, you know, you go in there, I follow you, and they just ask a bunch of questions and go. Then they send us to the other department. Then once you go see the other zoning and then go see this one, look at the tax thing to see where the, the bond, just to figure that out. Right. And he appreciated it a lot. So let me ask this question of you and the listeners. Yeah. If you had a piece of real estate and you were going to rent it, would you put any Tom, Dick, or Harry in there that came along? Oh, no. Why? Because you don't want no trouble. Right. You need a good tenant. You want to do, the do right things. background checks. You want to find out what's going on, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so when we're mm -hmm. acquiring a piece of property, it's the same type of relationship because we're not talking about giving him a cash and he goes away. We're talking about paying this person for two years or five years or seven years and having a relationship. So why aren't you doing that due diligence first? That's mm -hmm. the discovery. That's you. You're trying to figure out the whole thing. And if he's going to cover up his feelings and he's going to not tell you what's really going on, do you really want that? Do you want him to have secrets? That's like having a wife that's sleeping around on you. How are you going to feel about that? Mm -hmm. You don't want that. You feel betrayed, not because she slept around, because she kept the secret from you. 
She's supposed to be loyal and fiduciary to you. Right? But she wasn't. Mm -hmm. You feel betrayed, not because of the, I mean, I guess some people would feel it because of the sex aspect of it. I'm talking about the sneaking around aspect of it. Yeah, well, that's insult and injury to me. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, so why would you want your seller to perform this same kind of action? Why are you allowing them to do that? Mm -hmm. it, it's, just, it's just instinct. It's human instinct that we're talking about. I'm just trying to organize it so you understand when you hit the bullseye. Yeah, because I've seen you start working on a deal. and I say, Hey, Bill, how's that going? I'm, like, I'm not working with that guy. Yeah. Well, yeah, we had one. He kept changing the stories, right? He'd tell yeah. us one thing, Newington House, tell us one thing, and then he owns it, and his sister owns it, and then this, that, you know, well, wait a minute. He owes money. He doesn't owe money. You know, it was just too many lies, so we just walked away. That's a big shift, what you just said, for a lot of people, is you need to shift your way of thinking to realize that just by pure diligence of being on this podcast and trying to learn from somebody like us, and I'm not, you know, I don't care who it is, the fact that you're hunting for real estate investing or real estate entrepreneurial type activities is more than the average person. So you know more than the average person. Even if you're a rookie, you know more than an average person because you're reading books and listening to podcasts and watching videos and probably mm -hmm. bought some courses and you have more data than the average person, believe me. So why, why are you ashamed of that? You're the ethical intelligent person in a room no different than when you walk into an attorney's office or a doctor's office who has the ethics presence then so when you when you shift your way of thinking that you're now the doctor you're now the lawyer even if you think you're a rookie and you're not you are far ahead of most people in this industry and the mm -hmm. more you learn by living and the more experience you get the more confident you will be and the more more arrogance in a good way that you'll have. And yeah, I we'll mean, call it confidence. Yeah, confidence. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so the point so is the point is is yeah. Well, uh, arrogance is is confidence with cockiness. That's what it <laughs> yeah. is, right? So, so here's here's my point. They should respect you for wanting to help them with your knowledge. Shift that in your mind. I'm here to help, not to buy. And that mm -hmm. help flow alone will dump houses in your lap. So you might have to help four people to buy one house or five people to buy one house. It's not shouldn't be more than that. Right? You might yeah. you might have to do some things that but here's here's my point, Pete, and then I'm gonna get off this bandwagon. By helping that seller, you're gonna learn. Oh, hell yeah. You're going to learn facets of this business that nobody in a seminar could probably even think of teaching you. Mm -hmm. It's your education. So either go pay thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 to the big guys for your, for your every two week, half hour coaching call and hope you get something out of it or <laughs> spend some time in a house with a seller trying to help them and get your real education. Mm -hmm. Learn by living. <laughs> there it is. By the way, is that a, a, a barometer of deciding what house you want to work on? Like the, the people that are very willing to let you help them and the one that have like an opposition to want to help? Is that like a barometer? Like Yeah, because because right? the more you help them, how do they respond? Do they like shun you off like, oh, oh you're like a $3, $3 an hour you know, clerk? Or do they really yeah. appreciate it? Yeah, right. So that's a way to tell this is one to work on. I mean, it should be obvious, but I guess the thing is, if you're desperate, you'll work with the guy who's giving you trouble and not working with if you, you. Don't bother. If you, if you have good human instincts, which all of us have, you'll know which ones to help and which ones not to help. Right. Unless you're too greedy for the dollar and just don't do it because it won't work. If you're money motivated, it won't work. You have to be. Right. This is a duty thing. This is where duty comes in. Your duty is to help people. Right. Yep. So, so you have you have to be you have to have sincere interest in helping the seller. 
He is telling you how you can acquire this house. If you do this as a reluctant seller, knowing if you do this enough, you will get those monster deals all over. Uh, all others will be envious of you with. I mean, I hear people say how envious they are of my deals. All they're hearing is the end result. They don't know how much work I put into the other five before I got that one. Sure. Right? Now, here's another one. Always summarize the prospect's motivation so you know you have it nailed down. So Pete, let me see if I get this straight. You need the 30 grand to pay off your college tuition by September, right? Yeah, but that's not really see why I want to sell the house. So why do you want to sell the house? Blah, blah, blah. And I've seen you do that. That's why I asked a little while ago. I, it dawned on me like, oh, that would be a great question. So I wanted to see what you felt about that in this context. Yeah, but you repeat it back to the guy to make sure you got the right one. Right. So sum it up. We'll be, we'll be too quick. Sum it up or sum up the why. Uh, let, let me do this again. Sum up why they want or need to sell. Define the problems. Confirm the qualifications and resources you have to help them with it all. So hmm. you sum it up. I hear noises. Sounds like somebody's knocking my house down. Sum up the, 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 the motivation, the reason and the motivation, I guess you can say. Right? Mm -hmm. Make it short and sweet. And then align that to here's how I can help you. Align that to your mm -hmm. services so they know, right? So I'm elaborating on our little formula, right? Right. Find a motivated seller and communicate to them. That's number one. Number two, tell them what you do. This is that part. Tell them what you do. Then find out what's needed and wanted is step three. And step four is present it. And make the offer. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. So here's another one. You got that? Does that make sense? Sure. So no, I've seen you, I've seen you do that. It's really important because we're going to be uh, uh, impatient. And the guy says, "Oh, blah blah blah." You go, okay, I can do this, and it might not be the thing. Don't think the seller really has it figured out. Sometimes they don't really even know themselves. They need do to they? talk to you like you need to talk to a social worker. Or how many times has this happened? You know, I mean, we're old, so we can say shit like this, okay? So back in the mm -hmm. world, in the day of buying a computer, now it's easy, but back in the day, you would go to the computer store and you would ask a bunch of questions of the salesperson to figure out which computer you need. Because mm -hmm. there's many facets you don't know about. Right. Right? Buy a snowblower. There's all different kinds. Buy a lawn mm -hmm. tractor. There's all different kinds. Sometimes you need to go... To a salesperson in Home Depot or the loan, the local loan company, and you have to ask a bunch of questions so you could figure it out. This is no different than your seller. They have to, they have to have a therapy session with you, a house therapy session with you to go through because they don't know the process. So yeah. just by your virtue of being on this seminar, I mean on this podcast and maybe doing a few courses, is the reason why I say you have you know more than the average guy. Or girl. So you can help them through that process. Now, I want you to understand my language here because I don't like to mince words. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Define problems, confirm, and then confirm the qualifications or resources you have to help them. So it's as simple as, you know, I don't know how to do that, but I have a mentor that can help me, all right? I have this guy that I follow that's bought hundreds of houses. I can put in a support ticket. Let me ask him. Or let me call my attorney. Or, you know, I don't know. Let me go to the town hall and find out about it. They will respect you more if you say, I don't know, but I'm willing to help you find out. Mm -hmm. That's huge. So you don't have to know everything about real estate to go talk to this person. What you have to do is be willing to help and be honest. 
and say, I don't know. Let me yeah. go figure it out. Are you okay with that? And if they say, no, 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 no. Okay, then, they're, then, then you don't have to waste any more time with them. Mm. But here's the point. Suppose it's a zoning issue. Here, I'll give you a classic case. Let me completely change the subject. How do you think yeah. I learned so much about probate? Yeah, going through them. Because I'd have to go, I'd have probate, and I'd be like, I have to go find out. I'd go to the probate court, and I'd ask the, the, the clerk at the probate court, hey, I got this lady that's trying to sell me a house, and she says, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, okay, what can you do? Hmm. The clerks are there. They're, they're a public service. Just walk in. Say, hey, how does this work? And they'll tell you. Bring them coffee. <laughs> Buy that's, called live go that's called live Googling. Yeah, exactly. It's called learning while you live. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So it doesn't have to sure. be you. It could be your way. You may not even know where the resources are. You have to say, you know, Mr. Seller, I got to go find out. I don't know. I have to find somebody that does that. Here, here's another classic example. Mm -hmm. You're in the basement and, and the foundation's cracked. And they're worried about the cracked foundation because some realtor spooked them and they lost three sales because of it. You know what? Let right. me go find a guy and get Would you be willing if I find a guy and bring him here and let us look at it and we can get an estimate? Go Google mm -hmm. and find a guy and interview some contractors for the cracked basement. Learn while you're living. Yeah. And the customer's going to respect you for that. And what are you going to learn about it? Because the next time you see a cracked basement, what are you going to do? You're going to tell your story about how you did this for this other client. <laughs> It's too simple. Learn while you're living. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to move on. I'm ranting. Can you tell? I get so passionate about this. <laughs> Present offer offers you will believe solves the seller's reason to sell. And will appeal to his motivation so they stay stuck to you. You know how I've always said for a lot of podcasts how to make offers where the seller sticks to you like glue. Yeah. This is how. Yeah. It's because you're appealing to their already there motivation. You didn't create the motivation. It wasn't some whimsical thing that you, that you did in a 90-minute presentation. No, the motivation was all already there. All you did was... Be a private investigator and find out what the motivation is, and then, and then, and then appeal to that motivation by giving them the right offer that will help them get what they want quicker or better or more profitable. Mm -hmm. All you are doing is matchmaking, <laughs> right? Yep. Now watch this. That's right. Now watch this. You ready? Yeah. In in objection handling. Like when they have questions. Yeah. Don't try to overrule the prospect's thinking and make them wrong. Mm. Instead, do this. Listen, agree, and suggest. Mm -hmm. Listen, agree, and then suggest. Mm-hmm. That's how you handle objections. You don't need to have all the fancy words and all the stuff that we talk about. I mean, you will eventually, but you live, you learn why you live. Yeah. If you hear these questions more than a couple times, you should write them down and go learn how to handle them. Send in a support ticket or get on one of our, yeah. our Zoom calls or something. Yeah. What you just said is so important. I, I've Somehow, I've been trying to do that just in conversations just to be better at talking with people. Somebody says something, it's so easy to say, no, 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 no. But you could say, well, I can see how you see that. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, sure. But, you know, I did see this one thing, though, and you can give another perspective. Right. But don't disagree with them right off the bat. You just ended the conversation almost. You know, My entire that. job, Peter, as a coach comes down to one thing. All mm -hmm. I do with my clients is get them to look at it a different way than they're looking at it. Right. So if they're looking north to south, I try to even get to go west to east. Yeah. And, all, and just, take... just, just what you said, all I'm doing is, is telling them a story or saying this happened to me and what about this and could it be that and just getting them mm -hmm. to look at it a different way. So you are trying to do that with yourself. Yep. 
So, next. Mm -hmm. Don't be there to try and buy a house. Even me. I'm never there. You know that? How many times have you heard me say, I'm not your guy? Yeah. I'm not there trying to buy the house. The first time. Yeah, I'm not there to try to buy a house. Don't be there to try to buy the house. Think of yourself as a highly helpful customer service rep with resources. Think of yourself as a highly helpful customer service representative with resources. And while doing this, look for motivation that will create Mutual agreement to conduct the exchange between you and the seller with benefits on both sides. Mm. I'll read that again. And while doing mm. this, look for motivations that will create mutual agreeable reasons to conduct exchange between you and the seller with benefits on both sides. Next, oh, this is a Bill Hawthorneism if I ever heard it. Sit down, folks. Here it comes. Be honest all the time. Oh, sure. If you are honest at all times, you can relax while talking to sellers. Mm-hmm. And the sellers will soon recognize it and want more. This builds confidence with you and your seller quickly. It allows you to match your words and your actions, which is the ultimate trust builder ever. Yep. When your words and your actions match, trust builds quickly. The yeah. last one, which I think is my most favorite one, mm -hmm. is this. An attorney's job is to tell you his opinion of foreseen ramifications or angles or things that can happen to you because you did something. You signed a contract and here are the ramifications. Here's what could happen. Here are the angles somebody could take. Here's what your liabilities are. Mm -hmm. All the bad shit. That's what you hire an attorney for. I told my attorney mm -hmm. the other day we were. He did a presentation on uh, on our on our neck. Uh, we we it, you can join if you want. It's called Six Degrees Business Networking. Six Degrees Business Networking. You're welcome there. We meet 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on uh, on uh, Wednesday mornings. Okay, if you want to, it's, and it's still virtual. It's virtual. It's virtual. And if you want a link to that, just send me a support ticket, and I'll gladly introduce you to the boys and the girls. Okay, it's about twenty-five people we network every every. I don't get there till like quarter after seven, but uh, and they hate that because I don't need all that chit chat crap. Mm -hmm. And so, anyways, my attorney was on there, and he did a presentation, and I said to him, you know, I, I was with you last night in a closing, and I have an observation. He said, what's that? I said, I have an observation of what an attorney is this day and age. Hmm. He said, I'm interested. What does that mean? I said, what you do is you take all the legalese that are on paper that, that satisfy the court, if it ever gets that far, and you translate it into layman's language and explain it to your signee of the document so they feel comfortable about it. So you're a translator. Hmm. Right. Yeah, well, hopefully the attorney will read the paperwork so we don't have to. Or they drafted it and they know what it means, which, by the way, most of them yeah. don't draft. They use templates anyway. So, all right. Yeah, so, it's not that hard. so get that. So an attorney's job is to tell you foreseen ramifications and the angles, right? Mm -hmm. A doctor's job depends on his ability to diagnose you, prescribe, and possibly operate, right? Mm -hmm. They're specific jobs, aren't they? A policeman's job is to protect you in society, is to put the unethical people's ethics in. That's what's mm -hmm. supposed to be a policeman's job, right? Mm -hmm. Your job 
Your job as a creative real estate entrepreneur is communication. Your success lies directly on your ability to understand sellers' problems and solutions with motivation as the icing on the cake. You must be able to hear and sincerely understand what the seller's going through before you can help and he finds value in what you can do for them. If you don't do that, you won't buy enough. You won't buy, or you might buy a few houses, but you're not going to fulfill your dreams. You're not going to have, you're not going to replace your income. You're not going to have consistent deals. Oh yeah, by the way, how many deals do I have, Peter? And you have mm -hmm. that don't happen the first, they take 30, 60, 90 days. You're looking at a house. You sent me an email the other day. You've been working on that house for what? 10 months? A year? A year. Year, yeah. right? A vacant house. Mm. You know, we don't even know who owns it. You've been working on it a year. Yeah, we, yeah. it was who we thought it was all along. <laughs> yeah. Or well, we're just the trust. Ooh. Yeah, I got an email. Hey, you want to put an offer in? Like, well, where'd this come from? All of a sudden, it, it, it uh, pans out. Point is, is if you, if you help enough people and you get a reputation of helping sellers sell a house that they normally wouldn't be able to sell or having trouble selling or aren't getting what they want when they sell, mm -hmm. if you help enough of those people throughout the weeks, they will remember you because when you're sincere, because how many people yeah. are going around teaching, especially in real estate, that you help people? They all say it. Solve, find out what the problems is and solve the problems. But do they break it down like I just broke it down? No. I'm talking about just pure human instinct to help. Yeah. And if it's sincere and it's not pretended or faked or, 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 or like a movie star, you know, uh, any of that stuff, you know, that, mm -hmm. that aggravates the hell out of me. That aggravates the hell out of me. Tele uh, television. I had this conversation with my mother because I had to give my mother hell the other day. I'm like, Ma, I don't want to hear this conversation. We're not talking about this. Did I offend you, she said. I'm like, no, you're talking about somebody that said something on TV. You understand what makes up TV, don't you? She goes, what do you mean? I'm like, what are you watching? You're watching an actor or an actress. They're paid to deliver their lines so you believe them. In other words, mm -hmm. somebody else wrote the script for them. Yep. It's not them. They're just acting. They're pretending like they got hurt or they're pretending like this or they're pretending like that. So TV is nothing but pretend. Mm -hmm. There's nothing real about it. So why are you forming an opinion about what the newscaster said? Because all he's trying to do is get your attention so he can sell advertising. You ever notice lately, Ma, that you watch a show for four or five minutes and then there's eight or nine minutes of commercials? Did you ever notice that recently? Mm -hmm. since, since Mr. Trump came on board and became president, that's what's happened. Because they made so much money off of Donald Trump because all those news stations were bankrupt until they had something to talk to. I just read an article in the Epic Times last night that on Sunday, President Trump spoke at uh, the CPAC convention. Yeah. Fox News reported that they had over 30 or over 60 million viewers, the highest Sunday in history. <laughs> YouTube, the same way, or wherever he was, the channels, I don't think it was YouTube, wherever they were, he, he yep. draws a crowd. Yep. So how do you become wealthy? By popular vote. Right? Mm -hmm. So my point is, your, your TV show should not pretend it should be real. So your seller is surrounded by all this fakeness. So if you come along and you actually be sincere and try to help them, you're going to stand out mm -hmm. in the crowd. And you have to do that by demonstrating, not talking about it. You match your words with your actions mm -hmm. by actually going to the town hall or actually doing what you say you're going to do and demonstrate to them that you really mean it. You do that enough 
and fill your pipeline, houses will fall in your lap on days you don't expect them to fall in your lap because time changes everything. You know what I did on this particular uh, house? I had to go to the town hall, see who owned it, and it was, it was the, the trail was dead. So I go talk to the main lady in the tax office, and she says, I can't find the code to get the taxes paid. I says, well, I got a phone number. You, want you got a phone number? Yeah, here. I gave her the phone number to call the certain bank. Yeah. And I kept feeding her with information, and then she would let me know what she found out. It went back and forth a number of times until it ended up that her lawyers found out who it was, she gave her lawyer my name, who gave the, my name to the owner's lawyer, who emailed me to buy it. And, it was, and then the last conversation I had yesterday, she's asked me, you do renovations, right? Like, do you know somebody to, to, that can do roofs? <laughs> she's there, asking me for, like, roof help. There you go. You see, and that's why I'm telling my little story. That's, she's asking me, like, who do you use for your house? Learning it's like, hi, Pete, living. how are you? I'm Pete. That's and it's learning from by the tax living. Office. That's learning yes. by living. And That's I you know I, I I there's you know there's not a great chance I'm going to get this is two other three people they might outbid me you, but look what I learned doing it. I made a friend at the tax office yeah. and I can go out. Hey Helene, you got any other properties that are coming up? And she'll tell me. Yeah. You know I made a friend of her because I was helping her and it was no no hidden agenda except I was trying to help her. Maybe it helped me. Maybe it wouldn't. But at least be nice to the lady. Exactly. Damn. Damn, the mayor of town was a music student of mine, so I got some connections. There Take you, it easy here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, to end off today, Peter, because it's that time, I would like to it's, just make the point that I made at the beginning of the podcast that none of mm -hmm. today's methods are more than basic human skills that you now hold. Mm. It isn't all of the fancy math, experience, extraordinary skills you need and want. It's just being human and doing today's checklist with enough sellers without being needy and greedy and always expecting something in return. This will make you a true real estate rainmaker. I promise. The end. Don't forget to go on to the paragraph or the description where you saw this uh, podcast and click on the link so you get all your free goodies. There's 25 of them, which, by the way, I've been updating that page. So if you have been there before and think that you're, you've already been there and you already checked it out, I've been updating the page just for you. So you go back there and see some new stuff. There's videos on there now and there's some other links on there. I've added some stuff, uh, which I will continue to do. So that page is uh, constantly changing. Uh, and me helping the community, the real, creative real estate community, by giving you stuff that I should be charging you for, but they're my stuff, and I can do as I please with them, and nobody mm -hmm. can stop me. So they're yours mm -hmm. for free, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, also, um, go check us out on, on Flakebook, uh, Flipping Houses for Rookies. You just type in there. And uh, you can go on ZooTube, and you can type in uh, Flipping Houses for Rookies. In case you don't understand my humor, that was Facebook and YouTube. Just go in there, Flipping Houses for Rookies. We record this podcast every single week, so you can watch us live there. You can actually, uh, I don't know why you wouldn't want to come look at Peter and I. We're not pretty. Peter thinks he's pretty, but he, 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 nobody's no. told him yet. <laughs> no, I, I think I'm letting that one go. Yeah, okay. So make sure you go check us out there. And thank you very, very much for all the support we get, all the kudos, all the help, and everything that you guys do by just being there supporting us. OK, so get out there, talk to some sellers, use what we taught you today. Go listen to episode number 242, wrap it up in your mind and get out there and live and learn over and out. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.